What's up folks, today we're back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about where shallow bass go during the summer and a few baits you can use to catch them. Let us know how we do in the comments below because if the video does well, we're going to do a part two about where deep bass go in the summer and how to catch those fish. So hit that like and subscribe button and let us know how we did. Let's jump into the video. <laughs> Alright y'all, before we talk about any baits, I'm going to talk about where shallow bass go. It's as simple as shade. If you can find shade, you will catch bass. Shade is under docks, rocks, laydowns, stumps, grass, all of those produce shade. And you just have to know what baits to throw at all the pieces of cover. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Alright y'all, the first bait we're going to talk about is square bill crankbaits. Square bill crankbaits are one of my favorite things to throw. And you can throw them around stumps, grass, docks, you just bang them off of all the cover you can think of. Riprap walls, those are where it shines, riprap walls. Throw this thing against a riprap wall and fish it parallel to the bank, which I'm going to show you in a second. But you fish that right next to a riprap wall and it'll catch a lot of fish. Any cover you can find, bang this off of it and it'll catch fish. Okay y'all, the next thing we're going to talk about, about square bill crankbaits is color. Color, what I usually use is natural colors, and by natural colors I mean whatever the bass eat in that lake. It could be bluegill, shad, or any other fish that the bass eat in that lake. But if the bass aren't eating those, you can use chartreuses, reds. You're gonna switch it up. So I usually start with what I use in my lake, which I have really clear water. It's probably about three plus foot of visibility. So I use the natural colors and it shines but if your water is dirtier then you can go to those chartreuses and blues and blacks and reds and that will really catch fish but I also switch to the blues blacks reds chartreuses if the natural colors aren't working so switch it up a little bit throw it around all that cover I just talked about and you'll catch fish the rod reel and line you want to use for a square bill crankbait is either a medium heavy moderate action rod with 12 pound fluorocarbon or a medium power rod, moderate fast action with 10 pound fluorocarbon. I like using a medium power rod because it has very, it's very limber. Like if you look at the tip here, you can see it bends halfway down the rod. And what that does is it keeps the fish pinned. So if it's jumping and shaking, those treble hooks will rip straight out of its mouth if you're using a heavy rod. So having that limber action rod will really keep the fish stuck and you'll land a lot more fish. And also, the retrieve you want to use for a square bill crankbait, you kind of want to switch it up a little bit. So you throw it, you can crank it like three times or something and then stop. And if they eat it on that pause, then you know it's a pattern. But if nothing eats on that pause, you can start cranking it again real fast. And just switch up your retrieve and you know you'll catch fish if you find that right retrieve. Okay y'all, this is how you're going to want to fish a square bill crankbait against a riprap wall. As you can tell, this is a natural color crankbait, natural shad color with a little green back. And I'm going to be throwing against a riprap wall. It's actually a seawall. If you look over there, it's actually a seawall. But I'm going to act like it's a riprap wall for the sake of the video. You're going to want to get your boat as close as you can to the bank, throw it along the bank, and crank it back. Steady retrieve. But like I said earlier, you can kind of give it those twitches or pauses. Just kind of switch your retrieve up. So throw a cast with a steady retrieve. If nothing bites, throw a cast with pauses in it. If that doesn't work, just burn it back next cast. Just change up your retrieve until you get some bites and you'll know what pattern they want to eat, like they're biting that day. And you'll catch a lot more fish. Okay y'all, the second thing we're gonna talk about is, it's not really a bait, but topwater fishing. The times you want to fish top water, in my opinion, are early, early in the morning, right when it gets light, and late, late, right when the sun goes down. So early in the morning, right when it's first light to where that sun comes up and hits the water, it's prime time. And late when that sun goes down, right when it stops hitting the water to where it's pitch black, you can catch fish through those times with these baits. A walking bait a whopper plopper, 
and a popper. I love using those three baits. I catch a lot of fish on them. And I'm gonna go through each one of those and talk a little more specifically, but walking baits are my favorite. I've caught so many fish on walking baits, it's not even funny. I mean, I, there's a ghost color right here, and there's a white and kind of chartreuse color right here. And I'm gonna go through and tell you which ones you can use in different conditions. I have two different size whopper floppers right here. This is a size 75 and a size 130. I like using this to catch really big fish when I want to create a ton of commotion. And I just throw this one to catch any size fish, really. Any fish would eat this. A 10 pounder would eat it, and a one pounder would eat it. So I like using whopper ploppers. They create a lot of commotion when you want it. And poppers. I've caught a bunch of fish off of both of these. I actually recently just caught a four and a half pounder off of this one, as you saw in my other video. But I like using this popper first because it's white on the bottom. And if they're not eating this, I'll throw this. It, that chartreuse and orange, it just really makes them angry and will eat it a lot better if they're not eating the white. And the walking baits, for the color, if it's really sunny outside or if there's no clouds, throw the ghost color. If it's really cloudy, obviously, throw this color. Chartreuse, white, just the contrast for the colors, it just works a lot better. Where you're gonna wanna throw these baits is around docks, stumps, grass, and any cover you can find. So you can grab a walking bait, throw it next to a dock, walk it right past, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how to retrieve it, but you walk the dog, which is a style of reeling it back, you walk the dog back right past the dock, or stumps, or grass. You can throw this around the edges of grass and it'll catch a lot of fish. You can do the same with a whopper plopper, but it's just a steady retrieve or you can do a drag and stop, which I'm also gonna show you in a second. And a popper, you really just pop it and let it sit right next to it. It's really kind of like a finesse type of topwater fishing. Poppers, I love them. I'm just any size bass eats them. And I'm about to show you how you can work these too. But before we do that, the rod and reel and line you wanna use for these topwater baits, for the whopper plopper and walking bait, you want to use a medium heavy moderate action rod because they're a little bit bigger here i'm going to show you than the poppers let's say you're using a size 130 whopper popper and then that popper this is a lot bigger and it has bigger hooks so you're going to need a bigger rod for it but you don't want to go too heavy because still it's treble hooks and they'll rip out of the fish's mouth so you want that a little bit stronger rod for the whopper ploppers and walking baits but for the poppers, you can, go, you can get away with a medium power, moderate fast action because it's a little lighter and it'll really stick those fish. And it has 10 pound fluorocarbon on it for the poppers and 12 pound fluorocarbon on it for the walking baits and whopper ploppers. All right, so I'm about to show you how to work the walking bait. So you're gonna work this, use this style called walking the dog. And it's kinda, it's gonna take a little practice. So I'm gonna throw it out here a little bit. And you look at the bait, and it's just going to go back and forth through the water. And how you're going to do that is you're going to you're going to kind of have a twitch in your rod and kind of crank your reel at the same time. So it's like it's a you have to find the right rhythm and the right combination of twitch and crank because if you just twitch you're gonna have too much slack and it's not gonna go back and forth so you have to find that right combination and basically you throw this thing around stumps like I said earlier and just walk it right past and fish just blow up on it actually all the big fish we've been catching on this thing just suck it straight down they don't even blow up on it the little fish just cream this thing I mean they just eat it like crazy and then big fish like I said just like swirl on it and this thing's gone it's down their throat and they just it's so much fun to fish these things okay the third topic we're gonna talk about is frogs I love frogs I like to throw them around thick grass and shade all right you can throw this thing up under a dock get it in the shadiest part of the dock and just twitch it right past you're gonna see in a second 
I'm gonna show you how to walk the dog. It just goes side to side like that. It creates a lot of action and it stays in the strike zone right above those fish. So the colors I like to throw are white and like silver. So it's kind of like a whitish belly and chartreuse. You can also throw black. Black's a great option. Those are just the ones I have right now. But the difference between these poppers is this is a popping frog. It has a cupped mouth. So it's basically a popper, but it's hollow body and weedless. So you can throw it around thick vegetation and skip it up under docks a lot easier than a, than a popper would. So you twitch your rod and it pops and spits a ton of water. But this is a walking frog. You can see the difference between the noses. This is pointy and you walk it. It just goes side to side like I showed you that big one. You can change up with these frogs and catch a lot of fish in any type of vegetation, docks, shade, because they have completely different retrieve styles. Okay, the rod, reel, and line I want to use for a frog is a heavy power, fast action, or extra fast. You can even go to an extra heavy depending on the vegetation you're throwing around. But the line I use, always 65 pound braid. You can go down 50, but 65 pound is a lot more reliable if you're throwing in thick vegetation. Okay y'all, I'm about to show you how to walk a frog. It's the same thing as the walking bait, but it's a little more of a subtle walk. It just kind of jumps side to side. It doesn't have those long swinging side to side motions. So I'm about to show you that, but this is called the Spro King Daddy. It's a huge frog. I mean, normal sized frogs are probably like that long. Like there, this thing is huge and it has huge hooks. Look at those pair of hooks. That's huge. So it's just a big frog in general, catches big fish. So I'm about to show you how to walk it. So what you do, you can throw this in any thick vegetation, under docks, shade, anywhere. You throw it out and it fills with water. So you kind of have to start the action quick and see it just kind of hops go side to side like that. Doesn't have those long swinging, swinging motions like the walking bait, but you're gonna have to empty it out every time, or this frog at least, because it fills with water. But I love this frog. I actually hooked, <laughs> I hooked and lost a big fish on this frog. I mean, it was probably six plus, close to seven pounds. I lost it, I was throwing thick cover and this bait just made them just suck it down and just a hook set. It wasn't anything wrong with the bait. I just didn't have the right gear. I had fluorocarbon on, which you wanna be throwing braid because that fluorocarbon has stretch. I love this frog. It's probably my favorite frog, even though it's way oversized, I'll throw it anywhere. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is jigs, shaggy heads, and Texas rigs. This is kind of like the soft plastic section. So first thing you wanna do is throw it around shade, obviously. Docks, laydowns, rocks, stumps. You target those areas with a jig, Texas rig, and shaky head, and just shake them right past, or pop them. I'll show you how to work those later too, but we'll start with jigs. I like using natural colors. This one, I have a rage chunk on the back in blue craw color, and this is a natural craw, craw color a skirt. I love this jig. I catch a lot of fish on it. And for shaky heads and Texas rigs, for shaky heads, I love using this. This is the Finesse Worm by KVD Perfect Plastics in watermelon red flake color. I use that all the time on shaky heads. And if you don't know what a shaky head is, this is what it is. It's a jig head with a hook coming out the back and it stands up like that. And it's a finesse approach to fishing and it's a, just a great way to catch fish. I, I catch fish on it all the time. And if you don't know what a Texas rig is, it's a little bullet weight and an EWG style hook. It's as simple as that. So for Texas rig, I like using these colors. This is Old Monster Plum by Zoom. It's kind of like a June bug color and Red Shad by Zoom. I love those two colors. Catch fish on them all the time. And a jig, if you don't know what that is, 
It's a lead head with a hook coming out the back with a brush guard. Here, I'm gonna get closer. See that brush guard? When cover hits it, it hits it and goes and reflects. But it, when a fish bites, it exposes that hook. And so you can basically throw this anywhere. And same with the shaky head and Texas rig because they are completely weedless. So like I said before, target the shade with this stuff, natural colors, and you'll catch fish. For shaky heads, Texas rigs, and jigs, I use a medium heavy fast action rod with a relatively high gear ratio reel. It's a 7.3 to 1, and I use 14 pound fluorocarbon. I like using fluorocarbon because that, it gets that more direct contact to the jig or shaky head or Texas rig, and I can have better sensitivity and better hook sets. Okay guys, this is how you fish a jig. You can fish a shaky head and Texas rig the same way as a jig, but if you look right here, it has claws on the back. This is the rage chunk, and it has a ton of action. If we look real fast, it's in the water. Those legs just kick, and it provides so much action. So what you're gonna wanna do is you throw this thing out, find structure, docks, rocks, and just throw it right past it. And you won't be able to see the bait, obviously, because it sinks to the ground, but if you look at me, you lift the rod up and then let it sink back down to the bottom. Once it sinks to the bottom, you reel in slack. You don't want to get it too tight. You don't want to reel in all the slack, but you just want to reel in the extra. And so you keep doing that. And what that does is it allows these claws, so it sits on the bottom like this, okay? These claws are pointing straight up like that, and this jig head's straight on the ground. And this skirt is kind of pulsating in the water, so it creates a ton more action. But when you lift it, it pulls it up, and those claws kick. And then when you put it back down, they fall, and the claws kick. And it really entices those bass to bite this thing. And there's a few more ways to uh, reel it in, so or re worked it. So I'm going to show you. Throw it, and you let it sink to the bottom, and you can drag it like I just did. You can let it sink and then you can pop it. You can give it a good little pop. So what that does, it just, instead of just slowly lifting and slowly going back down it, it's like, boom, like fast. And it just has a ton of kicking action. And you can just kind of switch up your trees. You can slowly reel up and then just pop it. Or you could kind of just drag it low across the bottom. So it's like a crawfish, like scurrying across the bottom. It kicks up a ton of dirt and has good action. So those are three ways you can work a jig, a Texas rig and a shaky head. Rotate around those three ways of working it, around the structure I was talking about, and you'll catch fish with these. It's pretty fun coming out here and seeing if you can change your retrieve to catch fish, because once you find it, it's kind of like a game. It's like, look at that, they're right there. So what I was saying, it's kind of like a game. You have to like, find what works, so come out here, nothing's set in stone. Come out here, try different things until you find something that works. Once you find something that works, you'll catch them all day. It's fun. Look at that, one was following. I know you couldn't see it, but one was following them, so that is a good sign. So that, I look at that and I'm like, I should probably pause, because I didn't pause that reel and one was following it. If I'd paused, maybe he would have attacked it. So I'm gonna pause. And they're all hitting on top water, so if this crankbait doesn't work, I might put on a little popper or walking bait, and that might trigger a strike. Because just reeling this thing, if they're not biting it, there's no use in reeling it. So you gotta try a few times, and once, once they're not biting, don't waste your time. Change the lure and try to catch them. It's the name of the game. Trying to find what works, and once you find what works, it's fun.